What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the HWK-290 light freighter, made famous by Kyle Katarn's Moldy Crow. A Corellian Engineering Corporation design, it was a rival to Han Solo's Millennium Falcon and Dash Rendar's ship, the Outrider. At a cost of 135,000 credits, it was about a third more than the YT-1300 and just 5k more than the YT-2400. At a length of 29 meters, or 95 feet, it was shorter than the Falcon, but nearly four times the length of a TIE Fighter. This freighter was 19 meters or 62 feet across, making it more narrow than the YT-1300, but nearly twice the width of an X-Wing. At a height of 10.4 meters or 34 feet, it would be taller than a TIE Fighter or an ATST, but shorter than an AT-AT. Its Class II hyperdrive rating is on par with Imperial Class Star Destroyers and many CEC freighters, but it would be slower than most starfighters when traveling through hyperspace. Its top atmospheric speed is unknown, but would likely be around 1,000 km per hour or 621 miles per hour, since many of the YT series are near 800 km per hour and some YV models hit speeds around 1,100 km per hour. So although the HWK-290s are more sleek and their design resembles the Starfighter, I think it is difficult to say that this would be faster than the X-Wing or ARC-170. But it isn't just built to look like a fighter, in many ways it operates like one. With powerful deflector shields and a high maneuverability rating, it could stay alive in a dogfight, but its impressive armament also allowed it to fight back. Although this model did not come stock with any weapons, all CEC designs were highly customizable and most opted to throw in the protection package. Kyle Katarn's Moldy Crow, for example, had four dual laser cannons and a blaster cannon turret. Not as strong as the options for the YV-929 or even the YT-1300s, but it was certainly able to blow apart pirates and TIE fighters. Being a very efficient design, it only needed a crew of two, a pilot and co-pilot, but it could transport six passengers and 150 tons of cargo. That's a weight equal to 187.5 dubaks and equal to the YT-2400 and some cargo configurations of the 1300. By taking a look inside of this ship, we can see that the nose contained a wide array of sensors and scanners while also having a fisheye camera lens. This data was pumped into the goggles that would be worn by the pilot, which creates a sort of 3D augmented reality view of the ship's surroundings making the most use of its already incredible maneuverability. The co-pilot seat is right behind this, and then up top here we have the docking collar, while this part of the ship contained the repulsor projectors that helped it get off the ground. Then we have the shield generator right below the fuel tank, which is followed by the power generator. These four engines are cooled via this large radiator, with each of the ion engines taking Tabana gas from the tank, energizing them with electricity from the generator, and accelerating and directing them via these chambers and drivers. In the brace that connects the pairs of engines on the side, we can find the shield projectors, which are optimally placed, making the most shielded part of the ship the area near the most important systems. And lining these engines are the atmospheric sensors, while the landing gear was located here. When in normal flight mode, these six engines would remain in a locked position, but when in combat these could all move independently, and could reverse thrust independently, tech that all helped to make a ship that was classified as a light freighter be more maneuverable than many starfighters. In fact, of the normal fighters that were used by the Empire and the Rebels, only the A-Wing and TIE Interceptor are considered more agile. As for its history, it was released to the market right before the Clone Wars, but was discontinued during the war because it never reached the sales of the YT series ships, so CEC decided just to focus on these freighters and other military contracts with the Republic. The Moldy Crow was originally owned by a smuggler named Rorik Garnet, who eventually used it to pay off the debts of Grappa the Hutt. This was stolen by IG-72, but it then found its way into the fleets of the Rebel Alliance. Here, Jan Ors and Kyle Katarn would use this ship on numerous missions, most notably in the destruction of the Dark Trooper project. During a subsequent mission to Rusan, Inquisitor Jarek's forces captured the ship and held it in the Sulan Star's hangar bay. When the Sulan Star was destroyed, Katarn and John managed to make it back to their ship, but as they tried to outrun the destruction, the explosion damaged the Moldy Crow, forcing an emergency landing. The damage was too severe, so they had to abandon it and had to commandeer a new ship named the Raven's Claw. That's its story in Legends, but so far it also has a short canon history as well. A HWK-290 was owned by an Imperial Governor named Gamut Key, but several were used by the Alliance to restore the Republic during an event known as the Sickness. This was similar to the Blackwing virus, and to stop its spread, these HWKs were equipped with incendiary bombs to help burn away the undead hordes. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. 
According to most images, and even the cross section, there is only the blaster cannon turret, not the four dual laser cannons that are listed as the stats for this ship in various source books. I think the stat was just a misunderstanding of these sensors, but has been repeated so much that it just stuck. Also, the length seems a bit off, as you can tell by the size of its seats, that it doesn't appear like a ship that could be two and a half X-Wings long. And in this size, there's no way it could transport 150 tons of cargo. Other inconsistencies involve claims that John replaced the stock light laser turrets, yet it wasn't supposed to come stock with weapons, and in some reference materials, they call this thing a heavy starfighter. Although that's very different from a freighter, it does more accurately describe this ship's size and abilities. Also, this series was supposed to be discontinued during the Clone Wars, but the Moldy Crow was made in 9 BBY. And as for its reintroduction to canon, it made its first appearance in the Star Wars Commander video game, and was shown in the comic Kanan number 12. So that's it for the HWK290 and the Moldy Crow. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, never judge a ship by its modest name, and the Force will be with you always.